Hello, hello, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. I see you guys filing in here. Jonah, my friend, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. It's good to see you again. Last time we were here chatting, the markets were in quite a different place than they are now. You know, we were five days off the low. We were consolidating into that little wedge, you know, and, and kind of everybody was on pins and needles. Are we going to retrace? Are we going to go test lows again? And market said, hell no, we're just going for it. We talk, hair... Yeah. So we talked uh, the 12th, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Right there. Right. Five days off of the Monday morning massacre. Right. Right. So now we're in a quite different place, especially on SPY. Like, holy moly, SPY back to highs. IWM all's back to like multi-year highs here. Q's kind of lagging, but maybe that's what we should expect at least until Wednesday. NVIDIA, NVIDIA earnings, we're going to get a lot of clarity, right? Like where are you thinking about that at all? Are you thinking about NVIDIA earnings and how they're oh, going to yeah. affect the markets? I mean, la last week it was all about Powell and Jackson Hole. This week it's all about NVIDIA. Um, I'm still trying to decide what I want to do with my position. So NVIDIA is a five and a half percent position in my investment portfolio. I've trimmed it a few times this year, uh, trying to decide if I want to trim it again before Wednesday, buy some puts just to protect, you know, hedge part of the position. I still think the valuation looks reasonable. Um, obviously, the the growth rates can't continue. NVIDIA is growing. So they were growing 200% year over year. Now it's going to be somewhere in low tri triple digits. Next mm -hmm. year, it might only be 30, 40, 50%. So I just don't know how much that multiple is going to have to compress over the next year. Or is the market just, you know, if, if everyone thought that NVIDIA was going to be able to sustain triple digit revenue and earnings growth, the stock could be trading at 60, 80, 100 times earnings. That's obviously not the case. So, I mean, I don't think we're going to see NVIDIA rally to three, $400 uh, because everyone's expecting that slowdown. My concern going into earnings is guidance because they are going to, there's going to be some sort of a delay on the new Blackwell chip, but I don't think we really know how much of a delay and it will impact earnings next quarter, the quarter after. Um, and if there's a delay for the Blackwell chip, will customers just buy the the H100 chip instead until they can get filled on the black well. Like, I, I just don't really know. So I have no doubt they'll beat. My concern is just the guidance. And if it's disappointing or if it's not as robust as we're used to seeing, does the stock sell off because of that? You know, what else does it take down in the market? You know, you would think a lot of the AI names would get hammered. I sold a position in SMCI. I've sold off 90 or 95% of my shares this year, but I still have a four or five percent position in SMCI. Uh, I was adding, so they reported earnings a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they beat. They gave very, very, very bullish guidance for full year. The only hiccup on their earnings was margins. So this year or fiscal twenty four, which just ended, I want to say net income margins ended up somewhere around nine percent for the year, give or take. And for the guidance on fiscal 2025 Q1, which is the quarter that they just started, they're guiding for net income margins to be somewhere seven and a half to eight percent. But they did say on the conference call that they expect margins to improve throughout the year as their supply chain and manufacturing ramps up. They've been spending a lot of money to improve both of them. So I mean, they're the, the guidance they the guidance they gave implies another hundred percent or close to a hundred percent. Uh, year over year number on revenue growth, uh, even if margins are a little bit lighter than last year, you're still talking 60, 70, 80% EPS growth. But none of that's going to matter unless NVIDIA keeps beating and raising. <laughs> right. That's their biggest partner. And if NVIDIA is disappointing and seeing delays, regardless of what SMCI says, uh, they're going to trade off with NVIDIA earnings. So that's my concern is that if NVIDIA is down 5 or 6% on earnings, SMCI could be down 10 or 12% on earnings. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's definitely mm -hmm. going to be interesting to see. You're going to, lots of think pieces on Wednesday, Wednesday evening, afternoon, morning, the whole day is going to be NVIDIA everything. I mean, um, they've been trying to call the top NVIDIA for the last year and a half. And of course. 
very, very wrong. I, I don't know where the top is. I mean, I do think there's a chance we've seen peak multiple. So, like, I think that forward multiple probably got up closer to 50 at one point. I don't think we're going to go past that. So, but does NVIDIA have to consolidate from here? Um, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but I want to say the, uh, let me just look it up real quick. What are you looking for? Uh, NVIDIA earnings uh, expectations for the next 12 months. Ah, gotcha. I was going to say all the EPS and revenue expectations for this quarter are in your reports widget there on the right, far right next to your uh, watch list. If you look for reports. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. I actually haven't used this before, so maybe you can guide me. So yeah, so just say add to visible column. Okay. Yeah, there you go. There's your expectation for the next on the right hand side, uh, the far right, the light green bars on the far right of the chart. Those are looking forward expectations for this quarter. Um, and then you could switch it to revenue or switch it to EPS. There's like the revenue drop down menu and the EPS okay. drop down menu. Yeah, there you go. And this is one of the new features on TrendSpider, right? Correct. Yeah, this has been around for a couple of months now. You know, we're okay. just kind of as we're so we're implementing all of the fundamental data to the platform. This is one of the tools that's available. Just a, a visualization of that growth, really, right? This is a very quick and easy way to see just the Olympian rate that this thing has been growing its revs and its uh, earnings over the past four quarters. Pretty wild. Uh, that, that changes fast, too. Jesus. So, I mean, as soon as I click on another stock, it, I mean, it immediately changes the, the values down here. Yes, sir. Very fast. Wow. Wouldn't have it any other way. Um. All right. So let's talk real quick, or, or let's like get into this. You know, the the idea of this uh, webinar. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We're just kind of been uh, shooting the crap for a little while, but now we got a bunch of people here. So let's get into it. We want to talk about your favorite setups. Yep. The markets are in a different place now than they were last time we talked. We were looking at particular scans. You know, we've we've got a group or you have a group of scans that we've been sharing with anybody who signs up using your ref link and get access to your scans. These things find your favorite setups. Talk us through what you're really looking at right now, why you're liking it, how you found it, all that stuff. So the setup, so every morning or every night when I do my scans, I'm looking for breakouts. I'm looking for pre-breakouts, which are consolidations. I'm looking for gap ups and it's the gap ups that I pay the most attention to either during earnings season or coming out of earnings season. Uh, Cause I feel like the stocks that gapped up on earnings, there is obviously accumulation there from institutional investors, you know, which is what's causing the gap up uh, obviously earnings or revenues or something in the fundamentals uh, came in much higher than expectations. And those are the stocks that I think, stand the best chance to rally over the next one month, two months, three months as we get into, you know, Q3 earnings season. So I've been trading the gap ups for the past couple of weeks. So if you look at my, and then some of the other setups I like, um, the five or six day bounce on stocks that are, oh, that's sort of like a gap up. So if they're pulling back, after a gap up, I'm looking to buy the stock on that first bounce off the five or six day. The other three setups I like are reclaiming the 50 day, reclaiming the 200 day, and then reclaiming a VWAP from a some anchored spot, typically a 52 week high or a recent high. Uh, I like the reclaims more than the bounces because if a stock is reclaiming the 50 or the 200 or the VWAP, it's showing recent strength. Versus if you're trying to buy them on the way down, whereas it's a falling knife and you're trying to buy it on a bounce off of them, you're kind of buying into the weakness. So I prefer buying the stocks on the way up as they're reclaiming those levels more than on the way down, hoping that they bounce and don't slice through another support level. So for instance, coin, I got into coin, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago when it reclaimed the 200 day moving averages. And I'll stay in that name as long as it holds the 200s. Um, if you go to some other gap up names, I mean, Kava's, and, and this is where fundamentals sort of, in my mind, come into play. I think the valuation on Kava is freaking ridiculous. Uh, I actually opened up a short position on Friday. So I have a pair trade right now. I am short Kava, long sweet green. So Kava's market cap today got up to about $15 billion. 
They only have about 310 or 315 stores right now. And I understand that investors are trying to price in future growth. But the idea that Kava is trading right now at $48 million per location is freaking crazy. So, I mean, hmm. Sweet Green's at $20 million, and that's that's expensive enough. That's that's kind of crazy by itself. But $48 million location, I'm guessing there's probably less. Uh, I posted this on Twitter, I think, that I bet less than 1% of the restaurants in the world, probably like a tenth of 1%, maybe even less than that, are worth $48 million. But somehow every single location at Kava is worth $48 million. It's insane. So even though this was a gap up, this is not a stock that I would want to go anywhere near just because I think that it's so stretched on valuation. I don't think you're going to get that multiple expansion over the next two or three months that you can get from some other stocks that gapped up on Q2 earnings. Gotcha. Makes sense. What so, else are you liking on the gap up side? So like Zeta is a stock that I got into. So gapped up on earnings and then it pulled back a couple of days later on that nasty massacre Monday. I jumped in as it pushed back through the moving averages. And I've been in Zeta ever since for the last couple of weeks now. Um, Axon, which I I jumped into on, I guess it was, for, when did I get into Axon? Uh I got in late last week into Axon on this first pullback into the five, six day, but I did get stopped out today uh, when it couldn't hold the 10, but this is a stock that I'll keep at the top of my watch list, you know, nice gap up. Uh, I do think valuations a little bit stretched. So this is not one of my favorite names right now that gapped up uh, other names that I'm in right now that gapped up on earnings transmedics. That's obviously been a big favorite of mine for the last couple of years. Aspen gapped up on earnings, uh, and now I'm just waiting for it to kind of consolidate here. And this is where I have to decide, do I want to buy it here as it pulls back and bounces along the, the five, six day, or do I want to wait for it to push back through and take out these highs here above 31.75? So I just, I haven't made that decision yet. So, uh, I, so I bought it on, when did I buy it? I think I bought it the day, I think I bought it at the open, the day after reported earnings, somewhere in the, now this is already a big position in my investment portfolio, so I'm only talking my trading portfolio right now, like pretty much nothing what I say during this webcast is in relation to my investment portfolio, um, which, like I said, I already have a very large Aspen position, but in my trading portfolio, I got in the next day, I believe it. I forget where it gapped open. I guess it, is it, I don't know. Jason, it, it opened here, right? Yep. I'm, I'm trying to like think back. That that seems crazy. It closed here, open there. I thought it gapped up. Maybe not. Yeah, I, I can't recall. If it, is it coming up in the scan? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's a 10 day period. Or let me Russell. Russell 2000. Yeah, I mean, it was more than 10 days. Uh, maybe not. No, it does. It, was, it looks like it's about yeah, it looks six, like it's seven, eight. 10 days. Yeah. No, it's not not showing up. Yeah, there you go. So no gap okay, up. Okay, wait, 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 never mind. Ah, I got confused. Sorry. This was the gap up here. Ah, uh, there you go. This was from um, last week when they, I'm trying to think what the announcement was. I already forget. Something good. I think they raised, I think they raised some capital. Wow. Um, I for, I already forget. This is, this has been a, a long month already. Yeah. Okay. So it gapped up here. So I bought it. So it gapped up, rallied. I think it was up 32% at the open and then pulled back. I bought it somewhere down here on the pullback to the, the 15 or 20 day and then rode it up. And then when it had this failed breakout, I got stopped out just below 31.45. Now I'm just waiting for it to set up again for me. Gotcha. And it looks like it's doing just that. Yep. No, I mean, I'm I'm very happy that it's holding the five, six day here. So, I mean, that's definitely a good sign. There's not a lot of sellers, but like I said, I just don't know if I'm going to, uh, I'll probably let it consolidate for a couple more days, then maybe try to buy it with a half position and then flip it into a full position if it breaks out through uh, 3175. 
Yeah. So with earnings basically over now, power gaps are power gaps. I mean, I know that we can get power gaps at any time. This scan is designed so that it'll pick them up. You don't need an earnings result to have that happen. Um, I Yeah, I wanted to jump into some stuff that's meeting the criteria right now that that we found Ulta is on my list of things I wanted to ask you about. That's funny. Yep. So, I mean, this was not, so Ulta gapped up a couple of weeks ago, but it wasn't an earnings story. It was a Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway story. Right. So gapped up, I think 14 or 15% the next day after they disclosed the position. It's been consolidating here for the past three or four days. So I started a position either last Thursday or Friday on this pullback. So it's just kind of bouncing along here. So you got the 50 day EMA as support. You got these 2022 lows as support. I'm sure if you probably stick a VWAP in here, you probably have some support there too. Yeah, so this is, I mean, for me, there's a lot of support right here. Right. If, it if it can't hold those levels, then I'll obviously get out. The, the question that I have to ask myself today is, and I still have a position, they report earnings this week. And I just don't know if I want to hold the position into earnings. I don't really have any profit cushion yet. So that's a little bit risky. And this isn't like a, this isn't like my investment portfolio where, you know, if I, if I like it for the next two or three years, I don't mind a small pullback on earnings. I'll just add to the position. That's, that's not my mindset with my trading portfolio. So if I don't have a profit cushion going into earnings, you know, these support levels don't really mean anything if the earnings report is disappointing. So I might have to unload it uh, ahead of earnings, which I think are Wednesday or Thursday. Do you think, uh, yeah, somebody in chat says they're on Thursday. Uh, okay. Do you think that a perhaps a downside move in NVIDIA could cause a name like Ulta money to go into a name like Ulta? I mean, it shouldn't. Uh, you know, AI chips and yoga. It's totally different world. No makeup. Right. I mean, it shouldn't, but I mean, who's to say, I mean... So I feel like sometimes the market's just waiting for an excuse to sell off and maybe a disappointing NVIDIA report could do that. It could take down the whole market for a few days. I mean, there's a lot of reasons to be bullish right now. I mean, even though seasonality is not great, uh, late August, September are not the best months for the markets from a seasonal perspective. But I mean, we we all believe that right, uh, Fed rate cuts are coming in September. Uh, Powell definitely sounded dovish last week in jackson hole oh uh, for sure i mean he he said it's happening oh yeah it's time just, to shift course yep uh, and pretty much all the other fed speakers have been getting in line with that same message you know it's time to start cutting rates and and moving towards neutral oh i don't think any of us actually know what neutral is i don't know if that's three three and a half four but i mean there's really no doubt that if cpi is gonna be under three percent heading towards two and a half percent in the next couple months, you really don't need Fed funds at four and a half, five and a half percent, especially with unemployment moving higher. And the BLS last week saying that they overestimated job creation by eight, uh, 808, 818,000 over the last 12 months. So we've right. created 818,000 less jobs in this economy. So the real unemployment rate is probably closer to 5%. So, I mean, you add it all up and they should be cutting, they should have cut in July, in my opinion, they should have done 25 basis points in July, and then they take August off, and then they can do 25 in September, take uh, take October off, you know, and space them out that way. But they they like to play their own little game. It's like they, they like to wait till the very last minute and then realize they're late to the party and then they have to go too fast. So I hope that they do 50 in September, but... I mean, I think some people brought up a good point. If they do 50 in September, does it look like they're they're now panicking, that they, they're they recognizing that they're too late, and now they're trying to catch up? So I could see that argument where if they did 50, the markets might feel like they're panicking and sell off as a response. So right, maybe yeah. it's better they just go slow and steady, you know, 25 bips at a time. Yeah, the election year seasonality in particular is <laughs> terrible in is September. Terrible in September and October. Okay. Yes, yeah. If you remove, uh, if you remove all but election years, if I was, if I was showing my screen, I would show you. Um, it's it's dramatically worse in September and October of election years specifically. We know that September historically is bad. It's the worst month of the year historically over you know some decades. 
but when you filter just uh, election years, it gets quite, quite worse. I mean, I could see I could see that happening again this year. Um, you know, if you have one side talking about tariffs, the other side talking about higher tax rates, corporate and personal, I can see where the market just takes it all as, you know, uncertainty and right. sells off as a response. Right. Uh, and so I, I am a little cautious. I do have a lot of hedges in my investment portfolio. My net exposure right now is 75 to 80 percent. I trimmed uh, trimmed a little bit a couple of weeks ago. And I'll probably if, if we do see some green after NVIDIA later this week, I'll probably do another trim. I mean, I'm just not like I'm just not bullish on the market right now. I mean, even though we we know we're getting Fed rate cuts, I feel like the Russell should be acting a little bit better. It's it is acting better than the, the Nasdaq. But I mean, it just it wasn't very healthy. I mean, we got that big rally in IWM, the Russell 2000, a few weeks ago on that cold CPI number. And then we gave back a lot of it. I just that's just not healthy to me. Right, right. Gave back the whole thing. It's really wild. Did we really? Did we really? We gave it, it all back. Wow. It gave it, they gave it all back. They took lows and then bounced it. Yeah, it's oh, we, oh, you're right. We gave we we gave it all back and some. Uh huh. Right, that August fifth drop down to the. I mean, that's a perfect bounce off the two hundred day. Too. Wow, yeah. Jesus. Yep. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. So uh, we, what about what about a couple other gap ups? TJX was one that was coming yep. up in the scan that I found. Uh, Starbucks also. Yeah, so Starbucks has been on my radar the last couple of days as well. I actually re regret not starting a position yesterday. So, so TJX is sort of. I mean, that it looks like it's just consolidating here, waiting for the five six day to catch up. So. If I was going to start a position here, I'd probably wait for uh, either a bounce off the five day or a push through 120.63. Uh, Starbucks, so that was a gap up on a non earnings related story. So this one was because uh, Bill Ackman started a position in Starbucks. I thought oh, it was because, up. no, it was oh, because he was the Nike. CEOs. This is the CEO. Yeah. Yeah, okay. correct. <laughs> So Nike gapped up because of Ackman. They, uh, mm -hmm. Starbucks gapped up because they hired the Chipotle CEO. Right. Uh, so this one, now it's sort of like in never, never, like no man's land. So big gap up, monster gap up. I right. mean, I, I just, I mean, Starbucks is a large company. I don't know if it's 70, 80, 90 billion dollars. I don't know if I've ever seen a company add on that much market cap from a new CEO coming in. Like that's a, that's a big move, but I mean, the stock's been beaten down over the last couple of years. This is a stock that could certainly, you know, keep rallying from here. So at this point, I missed that entry on that first bounce off the five six day. So now I have to wait for it to push through ninety five ninety five. Got it. Okay. So, yeah, I was going to ask you kind of how you think about it when you have that big of a gap. Yeah. Where your head's at on it. So I mean, it, as long as it stays, and what I would probably do is. If I got in above 95.95, I'd either have my stop loss just below it on a reversal, or I would keep that stop loss a little bit lower, maybe below the VWAP from the gap up. Got it. That makes sense. There was one other one that I saw that looked pretty good. PYCR. Let me just look at Nike. So, so this was uh, so this, uh -huh. this was the Nike gap up from Ackman. Got it. And I will say, like, so out of the five or six, maybe seven different setups that I like to look at. One of them is the bounce off of lows, recent lows, 52 week lows, multi year lows. I mean, like Nike, I mean, this is like a, a triple bottom here for Nike. So, uh, I mean, I will sometimes try to catch the falling knife, but like this was the falling knife right here. These two or three candles after that gap down, I feel like as it starts to build this base here on that third, you know, kind of triple bottom, I feel like that's the one that's viable. Um, and then you got that gap up from Ackman. So this is another one that I, I have my eye on. I mean, I just, I guess I'm just bearish on Nike. Like that's kind of the problem. Like my investment mindset, you know, kind of creeps in sometimes. So I'm looking at possible swing trades. Like I've been a big on running guy for the last couple of years. Uh, Deckers is probably my second favorite footwear brand. I'm just not bullish on Nike as a company anymore. I think they're getting beat in footwear and I think they're losing the battle in apparel to uh, Aloe, Viore, Lululemon. So, I mean, I, I get why Ackman jumped in. The stock's been beaten down and it looks cheap on a historical PE basis, but 
you know, after the stock's already moved, I don't know, 15% off the lows, like, I just don't know how much more juice there is to squeeze out of this one. So, I mean, the chart still looks great. I mean, I don't think you're going to get clobbered buying it here on this consolidation, pull back to the five, six day, but like, this isn't a name that I would go out of my way to try to squeeze into my portfolio. Right. What about some alternative setups? Something, I don't know, like the uh, 50, 52 week breakout retest. That one's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, so let's see. So some of the stocks that were, now this is, so these are from my, my screen last night for today's watch list. So some of these, some of these names obviously didn't pan out today. I didn't, uh, the only position I started today in my trading portfolio was sweet green. Uh, so I already have a pair trade in my investment portfolio. Today I bought sweet green as a pullback. So it undercut the 10 day just by a little bit. Once it pushed back through the 10 day, I started a position, uh, pretty tight stop loss. I don't love the action into the close. It did pump a little bit after I started that position, kind of a weak close, but the market closed weak too. So I'm not going to read too much into it, but this was, you know, certainly a gap up here, you know, consolidation, although this is sort of a, a choppy consolidation, but that's the only position I started today. I did have probably 30 or 40 stocks on the watch list. Uh, some of the ones I was watching today. So Deckers. So I was looking to, uh, looking to start a position. If it pushed through 980.22, which was the high from July 26th, obviously it didn't do that. So I didn't start a position. It'll probably be on the watch list again in the next few days. Meta was another one, you know, looking to either push through 531.78 or 542.69. Obviously, it didn't happen, so I didn't start a position. That's that pre-breakout consolidation look, though, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, some of these stocks, you know, definitely pop up in multiple screeners. Right. Uh, for that reason. You know, it looks like a potential breakout. It's also consolidating, uh, strong fundamentals, above the moving averages, but obviously some weakness today. Uh, Hims, I was looking to get into if it pushed through. 1718, which was the high for March. Obviously, didn't do that. IoT has looked really strong recently. So, you know, I regret not getting into this stock sooner, but I was prepared to start a position today. If we got through 4229, we did not. We got rejected at that high from May. Capri is another one. So, I was looking to get in this, you know, this one gap up, I believe, on earnings last week or some other news. Uh, now it's just sort of consolidating here below this recent high. So I would definitely start a position if we can get through 3590. Yeah, another pre-breakout consolidation name. Expedia. Quite a few of them. Same deal. Okay. So Expedia. So, you know, like I said earlier, I mean, I, I do keep an eye on the stocks as they're reclaiming their 200-day moving averages. This is one that popped up when it pushed through the 200-day. But if I miss that first push through, you know, now, now I sort of have to wait to get through these recent highs here. So I don't know if I, I don't know if I would buy it on the breakthrough 138.94, where I'd probably wait for 139.68, which looks like that's where it got rejected today. So that's, that's probably the spot to keep an eye on. So that'll be on the watch list again tomorrow. Yeah. So quite a few of these found with the pre-breakout oh, so consolidation scam. Oh, huh? yeah. Yep. Uh, whoops. Cake. Cake is another one. So rejected at those recent highs. You know, I don't know if this has to consolidate here for a few more days, let for the let the five day catch up, or maybe it pushes through tomorrow. But this one's definitely gonna be on the watch list. I mean, these restaurant stocks have all been pretty hot. I mean, Sweet Green, Kava, Wing has been acting pretty well recently. So I, I don't know what it is with this sector. I mean, what what strikes me as strange is everyone was worried about a recession, but if we were really like, if I feel like if the market was worried about a recession and a consumer slowdown, right. I don't know if these restaurant stocks would all be acting this well. So right. Discretionary I mean, spending would right. force you to be buying groceries instead of going exactly. to the cheesecake factory. Yeah. I mean, you'd see Walmart rallying and Walmart is at all time high. So that one sort of makes sense. But like, if, right. If we're going into a recession, I don't think people are going out to eat as much as they were. Uh, another one, I mean, and real estate's been really strong. Uh, and this is one name that I would like to get into, but we need to push through 1102 and stay above it. So I've been in Zillow for the last couple of weeks in my trading portfolio. That's looking, that's looking really good. 
Red fins looked really good. Holy moly. I know. Open here. So I'm keeping an eye on open. It still has a little bit more work to do. There's just too much resistance here that I want to wait to get through. But, you know, this is obviously a stock that's, that's been beaten down over the last few years. Interest rate cuts are going to be good for them. It'll bring down mortgage rates. That should spur activity. And I think this is a name that could certainly rip higher, but it's got to get through all of this stuff first. So it's got to get through the 200-day and these VWAPs from the December highs. And then it's then it's go time. What about a name like CAG, Conagra? This one came up in the, uh, in the pre-breakout consolidation. CAG, yeah. Yeah, I haven't looked at this one in a while. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like, I don't, so this is probably consumer staples. Like, I don't do a lot of trading with consumer staples. I just feel like they, they move too slow for me. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> But I mean, it looks pretty good. I mean, I, I wouldn't touch this one yet. I would wait for it to get through 3160. Got it. You're looking for the new high proper. Yep. Uh, some of the other names that I bought on gap ups and then pullbacks, uh, CWAN. So gapped up on earnings. I bought this one on that first pullback into the 8, 9, 10 day. You still have that in my trading portfolio. Docs, same thing. Gapped up on earnings. Bought it on that first pullback into the 5, 6 day. Still have it. Uh, same thing. OMCL Omnicell gap up on earnings. Bought it on that first pull. Actually, no. I so I didn't buy this one on the first pullback to the five six day. I bought this one uh, when it pushed through thirty nine ninety nine. So if this if this uh, if this high in resistance hadn't been here, I would have bought it on that first pullback to the five six day. But I didn't see the point in buying it there until I knew we could get through this resistance. Once we got through that, I started a position, still have that one. Shopify, I have a position in my trading portfolio, gap up on earnings. I waited till it got through the 200 day and then I started a position, still have that in my portfolio. Um, Spotify, still have that one, bought it. So gap up on earnings, pull back into the 510 day, whatever kind of messy, messy in there. Still have that one. Stop loss is now under the 20 day. Almost got stopped out today. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, exact sciences. So this one's been, this one's starting to work a little bit. So gap up on earnings, waited for it to consolidate, bought this one as a push through the 200 day EMA. Uh, and now just hoping that we can stay above the 200 SMA. So still have that one. You know, looks looks pretty decent. What about the uh, the anchored view app scans? The reclaim of the anchored view app. This is a new scanner that we worked with you on. Um, yep. That's available for anybody who signs up using your links as well. Uh, maybe you can kind of talk us through the process here, uh, how you think about it, and what it's all about for you. So, one of my favorite setups is stocks that are pushing through the VWAP from recent high, all time high, you know, some meaningful candle in the past. Um, in this case, it's it's the 200 day. So let's get off to a different chart. So Akamai, so gap up on earnings, finally got through the 200 day, consolidating, bouncing around. You got this VWAP from the, from the highs earlier this year. So this is a stock that I'm watching and would possibly start a position in the next couple of days with my stop loss below the below that VWAP there. Uh, Baxter is another one. So finally starting to push through this VWAP that goes all the way back to uh, the highs of last summer. Uh, I mean, and you can see like right you know, a couple of weeks ago. So it, it's hard to know. Uh, did the Two weeks ago, did it get rejected at the 200 day? Did it get rejected at the VWAP? I mean, it's the exact same spot. It's hard to know which one was more relevant, uh, but you do see this quite often. You see stocks that are trying to rally out of a base. They get rejected at the VWAP from that recent high or all time high it happens over and over again. So for me, it's important to keep an eye on those stocks. And once they finally push through those VWAPs, it's time to start some positions. Yeah, and you're looking for like what kind of uh, confirmation are you looking for with that? Is it a daily close above? Is it just is it intraday? How how are you thinking about it? So I mean, it depends on the name. 
uh, how well I know the fundamentals. Sometimes I'll wait for it to close above to see if it comes back and retest the VWAP the next day. Sometimes I'll start a position as soon as it pushes through with a tight stop loss just below in case it reverses. So, I mean, those are typically the two ways that I'll play it. So, and then other times like here, CRI, which I'm not familiar with, you know, it did push through that VWAP, but I wouldn't start a position because then you have the 200 day right here. I want to make sure it gets through the 200 EMA and probably even the 200 SMA before I start a position. Got it. So the, e is the, uh... and there you go. so actually today, I mean, you can, if I zoom in, you can see today got rejected perfectly at the VWAP from this candle. Hmm. Interesting. The 200 day EMA or SMA, do you have a preference? Or is it just uh, kind of, you want to, you want to be above both of them? Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it depends how far apart they are from each other. Um, I mean, I, on a shorter time frame, I definitely prefer EMA on a longer time frame. I prefer SMA. Okay. But, I mean, it really depends. I mean, you'll look at each, I feel like each chart, each stock, uh, acts, I don't know, has like their own character. Um, I mean, you see some stocks that look like they they get rejected more often at an EMA versus an SMA. So right. like for, for my short-term moving averages, I always use EMA. So five through 10, it's, it's only EMA. Uh, actually up to 20, it's only EMA. And then I typically move over to SMA for the 50, the 100, the 200. But I typically like, I, I usually have both on my charts just because I want to keep an eye on everything. Yeah, you want to know. There was one that came up that I saw, Vive. It was a 200-day gainer, and it was uh, anchored VWAP from a yeah. uh, recent high. Yeah, so that's that's definitely one that would be on my watch list for tomorrow. So if this thing opens up maybe somewhere around 199, 199.50, I'd probably start a position there with a stop loss maybe around 196. And then there was another two DRI dart in restaurants, kind of yeah. in theme with, with, uh, with all the restaurants working well. This one was gaining the that that two. It was, I guess it's just uh, it's trying to gain the two hundred day. It's like stuck right under it. Yeah. But so finally pushed through, pushing through these VWAPs. Uh, that one was on my watch list for today as well. It just needs to get through the two hundred. Yeah. So some of the other names that were on my two hundred watch list. So. So for instance, DraftKings, I would probably start a position in DraftKings if you can get through the 200 EMA. Okay. Uh, obviously, I couldn't couldn't do that today. DRI was DRI was on my watch list today. Uh, DXC, so that's another one needs to get through the 200 SMA. GSAT, so this one pushed through the 200 last week. Now it pulled back, retested it two or three times. Uh, so that's one that'll be on my watch list again tomorrow. And with something like that, like this is the, this is where the intricacies of how you're thinking about it are, are interesting. You would normally kind of buy that 200 break, but then as it's setting up, are you would you be more interested in the pullback to the 200 or more interested in a break to a new high? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so this is not a stock that I know. Like I have no idea what GSAT does. It's a so super cheap, super cheap one, a little penny yeah, stock. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's also low price, which makes me nervous. Yeah, right. So, I mean, these are not stocks that I typically trade very frequently. If I do, I typically have smaller positions. So in my trading portfolio, typically a starter position is six percent. That's a stock that I know relatively well. I know the fundamentals. I know the valuation. Obviously, technicals look good. If it's a small, you know, lower price stock or one that I'm not familiar with, I'll typically start with a four or four and a half percent position. Uh, back to my earlier point, you can see here, look, so you can see where the stock tried to break out and got rejected at that VWAP. So, I mean, when you look at charts, I mean, this happens over and over and over again. These stocks uh, routinely get rejected at VWAPs from recent highs. So. Yeah. So like, you know, so it obviously had this bigger pullback, kind of a building a base, now trying to push through the 200s. If it can push through that VWAP, I mean, I do think that's meaningful, but I mean, this is still a stock that would scare me a little bit to trade. So I would just have to size it properly. That makes sense. But uh, like, to your point, like, I don't know if I want to buy this stock 
on another retest bounce off the 200 or the VWAP, or do I want to wait for it to show some strength and push through 150? Yeah, it's tricky. Tricky to know. There was another uh, VWAP, uh, AVWAP, Zoom. I know I saw you talking. Um, saw you talking about Zoom the other day. Zoom's, uh, yeah. I mean, so Zoom. Uh, do you remember where it was? Where was it anchored? Was it the all-time high? It was anchored to the 200 candle high. No, not so. Not the all-time. Let me jump on that chart and see. Give me one second. So, I mean, this thing did push through the 200 uh, last week on earnings. It was on. It was on one of my watch lists. I think on Friday. Oh, I so see. I was hoping that Zoom was going to pull back and retest the 200s. Obviously, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Now it's trying to get through these highs here. So, I mean, I would consider a half position in the next couple of days if it pushes through 71.24 and then maybe add to it above 74.41. Gotcha. Yeah, it looks like that 200-day v app is anchored to the september 2023 high it doesn't not as uh important of a high it just broke through it recently is all yeah, yeah you've got it you've got it on there this one's been beaten down i think so at these lows 55 11 a couple weeks ago i believe zoom was down 90 percent, or maybe even 92 percent from their all-time high insane uh, and i believe like i actually asked people on twitter and everyone confirmed it Arc has now sold out. So Arc was buying Zoom in the 200, 300, 400. Someone said their average cost basis is around 300, like average cost basis around 300. They wrote it all the way down. And then I don't know exactly when they started to sell it, but apparently they are now fully out of Zoom, like pretty close to the lows. <laughs> all time lows, they get out and now the stock finally starts to rally. Like you can't, you can't make this up. That's you just can't make it up. That's unreal. <laughs> it's exactly kind of what you would think. I guess, is it possible that their position was just that big that they? I, I that? believe it was their biggest position at one point. Uh, like I think earlier this year or late last year, I believe it was Tesla, Zoom, and Roku were their three largest positions. And I think Zoom was still one and a half billion maybe around that size so now i mean now as the stocks pulled back maybe the position size got smaller but i mean i i this you know this pressure right here might have been them selling yeah right exactly and then once they finally got out it was like green light for people to start jumping in it's absolutely wild she cannot so, catch a break can she I mean, so it, it looks like zoom i mean so there's pretty big resistance up here around 74.50 Right. So I'm not really sure if it's worth starting a position here, knowing that, you know, it could certainly struggle to get through here. So this is probably a name that I would watch closely and probably wouldn't bite at it until we got through 7450. Hmm. OK. Yeah. And it, it, the amount that it's gained already, it, it could right, be a exactly. while before it gets there. Yep. I mean, it's going to have to consolidate at some point. I wouldn't be surprised if it ran up to 7450 got rejected there and then right. consolidated for a week or so below resistance before finally pushing through, you know, that would probably be the better place to buy it. Why, why tie up your capital now? Just be patient. Yeah. The, you got to figure how many shorts have stops at that 75 spot. They're all there. So like to bring price up to them, knock them all out and then reverse would be po poetry. So here's another one. I mean, ZBH and, you know, I've been trying to find some other med tech stocks that I can get excited about. Uh, Transmedics is obviously a big position for me in my investment portfolio. I recently started a position in Clearpoint, which actually had a, had a massive gap up on earnings. I didn't catch the whole thing, unfortunately. But Zimmer is another one. Uh, I mean, this stock looks pretty good here if it can get through the VWAPs and the 200-day moving averages. So that's probably a stock that I would look to buy around 120 uh, Clearpoint, I mean, Clearpoint might have had the best, one of the best gap ups on earnings and then follow through the next few days. So, uh, I mean, this stock's been beaten down over the last few years, still losing money, but they had a nice earnings report. You know, this is a small cap med tech company would probably benefit from lower interest rates or rate cuts that are coming up. But as you can see here, massive gap up on earnings. I regret not buying it here. 
I wish it had been on my radar that day. I would have bought it on a push through 798. I missed it. I bought it a couple of days later on this first pullback to the five, six day. And then I've been in it for the last week and a half or so. Nice. What a steady gainer, like nonstop. Actually, just actually, so I, might have, I might've gotten a little bit later. I might've got, I think I got in around like 10 50, maybe, I don't know, 11, somewhere in there. So I probably got in somewhere around here, but yeah, I mean, this thing has just been absolute beast. I mean, uh, since they reported earnings, it's up, I mean, it's up 80% in three weeks. And it's still, I mean, I think it still only has a market cap of 250, $260 million. So, you know, it doesn't, doesn't so take much to move these names around. Yeah. Right. Do you want to take a few minutes and take a few requests from the audience? Yeah. Got, yep. got some folks asking about some charts. Uh, one folk, uh, one fellow said Micron curious about Micron. I'm pretty sure it looks pretty bad, but let me pull it up. So Breeze is another one. This was on my uh, the 200, 200 day watch list this morning. So Breeze is definitely a name that I would like if it can push through the 200. Uh, Micron looks pretty, well, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, obviously at this pullback, uh, I believe they have earnings coming up. I believe some analysts just put them on negative catalyst watch list, whatever that means. Um, let me just check when earnings are. You just you throw them up on the chart, man. Go to Wait. your, uh, yeah, go to other data button up at the top uh, towards the left at the uh, to the right of your indicators, candle patterns, chart patterns, oh, heat maps. Okay. Go to other data. Uh, yeah, click on the three dots next to where it says other data. I don't see, where does it say other data? The next green button to the right. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then turn on uh, earnings. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that is... September 21st, it looks like. Okay. Or 25th, September 25th. So you got a, you got a ways to go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think now... I think Micron will probably move on Wednesday off of NVIDIA earnings. It's For sure. Stock. So I don't think I would want to get into the stock ahead of NVIDIA earnings, but assuming NVIDIA earnings are fine and, you know, Micron doesn't get crushed, I think it looks, you know, it looks decent if it can push through the 200 day. Uh, it filled this gap here, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. Um, what VWAP did that bounce off of? So I don't know if it's relevant or not. It bounced off the, yeah, that's probably relevant. So it bounced off the VWAP from the 2022 lows. Which looks like a pretty important low. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, that is like the low. And that's the other reason, like when I talked about buying stocks that are uh, bouncing off 52-week lows or other important lows, uh, Lulu was one that I was watching. I did, I took a swing trade I don't know, a couple of weeks ago when it was pulling back and I thought it was going to bounce off of the 2022 low, or maybe I waited. I think maybe I waited until it pushed back through and I forget exactly, but I mean, there are a few stocks out there right now. Actually, Snowflake is one too. So Snowflake has been flirting the last couple of days. It did back on uh, August 5th, it did test the 2022 lows and now it's just sitting above those. So I mean, even though I think Snowflake is still overvalued, even though it's down 40, 50% since these highs in February, I still think it's 30, 40% overvalued personally. But that might be an interesting swing trade here. If it retests this uh, 112 level, get in there with a stop loss, maybe around 110, 109. What about uh, VKTX? What is it? BKTX? Yes, sir. V. V. Oh, oh yeah. Viking. Okay. Yeah. Huh, I mean, so this, interesting. I mean, this is one I've been watching. Obviously, a big move. I think it was either a drug approval or phase three trial data. I don't follow it close enough to know for sure. I believe it's another GLP-1, so it competes with uh, NVO and Lilly, LLY. Uh, people have asked me on my... Uh, opinion. I do not have one. I really don't do anything in biotech. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I just, I have no way of comparing one company's drugs to another company's drugs. I mean, there's a, there's plenty of biotech investors out there and that's all they do is biotech. 
I feel like that's most investors. You're either only biotech or you do everything except biotech. And I'm in the second camp. So, I mean, from a pure technical standpoint, I mean, if VKTX and here's, I mean, once again, here you go, the VWAP from those highs. Yep. Key. Over and over getting rejected. So this is not a stock that I, I mean, you could have bought it here probably on the bounce off the 200 day. But at this point, if you miss that bounce, I probably wouldn't buy it unless you can get through these VWAPs. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, what else is on here? Crus, K-R-U-S. So this is another restaurant stock. This is uh, sushi. Yeah. I actually wish they had one in Boston. <laughs> uh, chart. Oh, nice. Took out lows. Held. So we'll swipe see. cruel. Let me just. I mean, I probably wouldn't touch it. I mean, the only thing you could really do here is it's it's above the 50 EMA. So I guess you could manage your risk there. But I mean, big gap down here. I typically I don't love to trade stocks that have big gap downs. Uh something was obviously wrong. Right. I mean, it did. It's it's the complete opposite of a huge gap up, right? Something's right. fundamentally broken. Right. Instead of yeah. something is fundamentally much better than it was before. But this is sort of like, I mean, I was looking at this chart a couple of days ago. And I mean, this kind of reinforces my short thesis on Kava. And I, I know they're not the same companies. Kava's Mediterranean food, uh, KRUS is sushi, but... I looked at KRS a couple of years ago and the stock was so expensive. It was trading at like 20 or 25 million per location. And then as soon as growth started to slow down or they gave weak guidance, the stock drops 30, 40, 50% in a couple of months. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I feel or, or what I think might happen to Kava at some point, reality is going to set in growth's going to slow, you know, growth's going to slow down our margins are going to stop expanding and, and Kava is going to get crushed. Now I I've never even eaten a Kava, so I'm not saying anything about the company. Uh, maybe it's a great company. Maybe people love the food. I'm pretty sure they do. I just think the valuation on Kava is absolutely insane. Just like the valuation on KR, KRUS got insane. Now it's kind of getting right sides, but I think it's still pretty expensive. Last time I looked because all these restaurant stocks have very, very thin margins. Like most of them have, 20 or 25% gross margins and typically net income margins are like three to 6%. Like these are, these are not great business models and most of them don't even serve alcohol where you actually do have good margins. We got a couple of requests for super micro. We kind of already went over it earlier. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks pretty bad. Um, it's below the 200 day. You got NVIDIA earnings coming up on Wednesday. Definitely not a stock. I mean, I would not trade the SMCI right now or try to start a position ahead of earnings. I already have a position in my investment portfolio with a much lower cost basis, which is why I'm, I'm obviously holding no shares into earnings. But I mean, there's nothing on the chart that would tell me to start a position ahead of ahead of NVIDIA earnings on Wednesday. Right. Now, if, if NVIDIA earnings come in good, SMCI rallies, pushes through the 200 days and the 50 EMA, then I think you can start a position. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise it's vulnerable. Um, maybe let's take like one or two more. Uh, CLBT. CVLT. CB or CLBT. Sorry. CLBT. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I traded this one actually a couple weeks ago. I got out too, too early. I mean, this is another one gap up on earnings. Beautiful move. It just, I forget where I, when I got in, I think, I don't know, I have to go back and check. I, I held it into earnings, so I benefited from the gap up. I think I sold the next day to take profits. I forget what was going on in the markets. I was just worried about a reversal, just wanted to lock in those gains. But, I mean, this thing's just, you know, continued to grind higher, now pulling back, maybe finally giving me a chance to get back into the name on this, you know, this pullback retest of the five, six, eight moving average. So yeah, this is, this is a name I'll definitely be watching the next couple of days. Cool. Uh, P S I X last one. P 
PSIX. Mm -hmm. Not familiar with this one. Jesus. Monster. I mean, that's that's so these these are the stocks that I just I don't have the nerves to trade. I mean, this thing is I mean, this was a two dollar stock back in May. Now it's a twenty dollar stock. I mean, it's up 10x in the last three or four months. I, I mean, I don't know anything about the company. Obviously, something something's going well. Um, I mean, I don't I don't have any comments. <laughs> it's a it's a great looking chart. Congrats if you owned it, but I wouldn't even know where to get into this one. So right on. Well, Jonah, yeah, this is like so. I mean, here's like here's one. So A L A R. Um, I mean, if you look at like if you just remove the last three months on that chart, uh, this chart, ALAR, looks somewhat similar to that other chart. I mean, this right. thing uh, basically 10X over a four or five month period. And then once you start to see growth slow down, boom, you're down 50%. So, I mean, I just, I don't have the, I don't have the the nerves to chase stocks that are up 10X in a, in short periods of time. I mean, we can go back and look at Upstart, which I owned in the 30s, back in late 2020 and it went from the mid thirties to the low four hundreds in about 10 months. And then once growth started to slow, the thing got absolutely hammered and was down 80, 90% over the next year. So, you know, these, I mean, obviously if you're a trader though, when you owned upstart on the way up, there's no way that you should have been in that entire drawdown. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I took profits on the way up. I probably, my cost basis was probably all said and done. Cost basis is probably in the 50s. I probably sold my average exit was probably around 250, maybe. So I mean, I still did pretty well, but I even I mean, even I got out too late. Yeah. But that's what happens. I mean, some of these stocks, they can go up like rockets, but I mean, they can drop like rocks too. So right. And that's that's why you have you know tight risk. Yep. Criteria. That's why you have scans that identify the key setups that you're really looking for all the time. That's what the whole process is all about, right? I probably keep my stop losses a little bit tighter than other traders, but I also carry more positions than other traders. I mean, I know some traders that only have four to six position, uh, four to six positions in their portfolio. Uh, you know, anywhere from ten to twenty percent each. I'm typically ten to fifteen, maybe twenty positions. In my trading portfolio, typically five, six, seven, eight percent size on average. And I typically keep my stop losses at most three or four percent below my entry price. And that's why, I mean, but that's why I use the scanners because I want to find stocks as they're breaking out. And if they can't hold the breakout, I want to get out with a small loss. I want to find the stocks as they're pushing through their 200 day moving averages, the VWAPs. And if they can't hold, I want to get out with a small loss. So I'm just not willing to take any big losses on any positions unless it's a gap down. Uh, you know, sometimes there's a stock offering, some, I mean, CEO leaves, like whatever. I mean, you just, you can't avoid that. You're just on the wrong end of it. Bad luck. But for the most part, I try to keep my losses uh, two, three, four percent at most. And then my average uh, exit on the on a gain is typically five. I think my average gain this year is like six percent. Average loss is probably three percent, two and a half or three percent. So I mean yeah, that's two, the way that I do it. That's what works. Two best. to one, two to one R is what. Yeah, you're saying. yeah, probably probably closer to two and a half. Cool. Well, uh, this has been an awesome session for Actually, anybody. Who, for I anybody, you, I keep track of it. So average exit. So average gain on closed position is 6.2. Ah. Average loss on a closed position is 2.2. Oh, nice. However, so closer to three. But I only have like a, probably a 35 or 40% win rate. Got it. Well, that's the whole thing about R though, right? If you have R dictates win rate, the higher the R, the lower the win rate or the lower the necessary win rate. So that's a very common misconception, I think, for lots of traders. You think you got to win all the time. You don't. You just have to win proportionately, percentage-wise, correctly. Like, there's probably some traders out there that have 70, 80% win rates, but their R is terrible. average gain is probably, you know, one and a half times bigger than their average loss, maybe even right. less than that, right? Right, yeah, that's exactly. Like, that, that's like the uh, the Renaissance Technologies, uh, like these big quant funds. I mean, that's, that's how they do much, it. That's pretty much how they do it. Yeah. Yeah. 
mean, like I, I've heard that Renaissance barely has like their win rate is barely above 50 percent, hmm. but yet they return like 50, 60, 70 percent a year because they're just doing so many freaking trades. Yeah, and they make you know what they don't make up for in, you know, they make up for it on quantity. Right. Any any more questions? I don't mind taking more questions. I actually prefer that. Um, I think I think we've pretty much got through them all. Yeah, I think we pretty much got through them all. If anybody is curious about uh, the scans, you know, uh, the reason for the season, why we are here is because uh, Jonah has sh uh, we've created with Jonah a handful of really awesome scanners. He's utilizing these things every single day to find the setups that we're discussing throughout this session. So if you are interested in gaining access to these scanners, all you got to do, sign up for a TrendSpider account. Um, Jonah actually also has the absolute best discount that's available on TrendSpider. You get up to 65% off uh, depending on the account that you choose. So you can get a cheap TrendSpider account. You can get access to all of Jonah's scans. You can find all these things exactly the way he is every single morning. And I guess... Yeah, just to go through. So there's the breakout scanner, which is the one that we're looking out now. There's the pre-breakout consolidation scanner. And I go through all of these every morning. And then there's the anchored VWAP one, which we went through. Yeah, this is the newest one to the arsenal. And then there's the power gap up. which is the one that I, I like the most during earnings season. And, um, even coming, and even coming out of earnings season, because if you miss the gap up, you know, the day of earnings or even the next day, I want to keep an eye on those stocks and try to catch them four or five, six days later as they have consolidated a little bit and starting to bounce off that, that five, six day for the first time. And then you can run all of these scanners against NASDAQ stocks, New York Stock Exchange stocks, or which I what I typically do, I run them against the Russell 1000 and then the Russell 2000. Got it. Interesting. Somebody's asking me a question. Do you get access to other scans from other contributors? Yeah. I mean, we're always sharing stuff on our social feed. If you follow us on Twitter, you'll see we share lots of different ideas. There's tons of pre-scripted uh, ideas in there as well. There's a lot of different pre-made scripts that you can access for sure. Uh, question for you, Jonah. Are you trading, adding to your position in App or Aspen, especially with the recent Aspen move up? Uh, so, I mean, Aspen was, Aspen's an 18% position for me right now in my investment portfolio. It's my second largest position behind Transmedics. So, I am not adding to it right now after this big move the past couple of weeks. Um, in my trading portfolio, like I said, I owned it. I bought it on this gap up here, actually on the pullback after the gap up on earnings. Owned it here, owned it this. Uh, this was last, I guess this was two weeks ago. It was up, I think, 23% in a day. Owned it there, and then I got stopped out on this uh, failed breakout. So, in my trading portfolio, I am looking to get back into Aspen. In my investment portfolio, I am not adding to my position right now. It's already big enough. Got it. I mean, I was I was buying Aspen last summer when it was in the sixes. So awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. What about app? They're they app, were asking about um, app too. Yeah, I mean, so apps also had a nice move in the past three or four weeks. I mean. Uh, I forget exactly where earnings was. That might have been earnings. So they had, I mean, this company continues. I mean, you can just look back over the last year and it gaps up on almost every earnings report because they beat and raise like every three months like clockwork. And then you listen to the earnings calls and you're like, my God, these guys are freaking bullish as hell. So I still, this is still one of my favorite tech stocks right now to own. It is up a lot in the last couple of years, but it's still only trading at like, 10, 11 times next 12 month EBITDA and EBITDA is growing at like 30, 40% for the next 12 months management. So if you look at the, uh, the, the analyst estimates, they're looking for a significant slowdown in growth over the next 12 to 24 months. But then you listen to management and they're saying 
they can keep growing 25, 30%, and they still see more margin expansion as they expand into new verticals. So I remain very bullish. Management's very bullish. Stock uh, valuation makes a lot of sense. Like, I don't know why you would want to chase stocks like Snowflake or CrowdStrike at these crazy multiples when you can buy app at 10, 11 times next 12 month EBITDA. So they generate a ton of free cash flow. They're doing stock buybacks. They're now pushing into new verticals. So they're not just doing uh, advertising for gaming. They're pushing into e-commerce and other sorts of performance advertising. So I just think it's one of the best growth stories out there right now at a reasonable valuation. And the chart looks awesome. So, I mean, once again, this is my third biggest position in my investment portfolio. It's had a big move the last month. I'm, I'm not adding to it right now, but I would on a pullback. And I also own it. I own this one in both my portfolios. Got it. Awesome. Well, let's cut it there. I think we've gone through a lot of information today. For everybody who's tuned in, we really appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We're going to be doing a couple of more of these. Uh, next one's in a couple of weeks. It'll be again on a Monday after market close, probably in about two or three weeks. So just keep an eye on Jonah's uh, accounts. He'll be uh, promoting it as soon as we have a date selected. And uh, yeah, again, if anybody's interested in checking out these scans, gaining access to these scans, if we have any TrendSpider traders in the audience right now and you don't have access to these scans, by all means, hit up our customer support team. They'll hook you up. Um, and if you are not yet a TrendSpider trader, you want to get access to this stuff, you're more than welcome to get it. All you got to do is sign up for an account. Uh, you got monthly and yearly accounts. You can save up to 65% off. Uh, and see what Jonah sees. That's really kind of the whole idea here. Make it so that you guys can uh, find these names along with him. So again, Jonah, I want to thank you for your time. For anybody who's asking about whether or not this will be available online, this video will be available. Uh, if you signed up, it should be delivered straight to you, but it'll be posted on Jonah's YouTube and TrendSpider's YouTube uh, in the next day or two. We'll have a, we'll have it up. The one, uh, the one I got really lucky on, so... I started a position in EVH when it uh, pushed through the 200 day. I think it was last week. And then like two days later, there's buyout rumors circulating and the stock pumps 17%. So uh, like that's, that's just pure luck, but I'll, I'll take every, I'll take one of those every once in a while. It's nice, to, yeah. nice to get lucky sometimes. Take a 17% gainer on pure luck. That'll work. <laughs> I, as soon as I saw those rumors, it ripped 17%. I sold right away because I have I have no idea if there's any validity to those rumors. I feel like nowadays, more often than not, they turn out to be uh, nothing more than rumors. Yeah. Uh, nothing ever comes of them. So if, if the stock's going to pump 17% in 15 minutes, I'm going to get out and take my game. Yep. Makes sense. <laughs> Right on, Jonah. Well, again, thank you for your time today, man. We really appreciate it and really appreciate everybody tuning in, being here with us and looking forward to doing this again with you here in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Thanks for your time, Jason. Appreciate All right, brother. Take care. Bye, we'll guys. talk soon.